to get the gracious invitation from Parampujani Sar Sanchalak Dr. Mohan Bhagavadji to be here on this occasion, an auspicious occasion of Vijaya Dashami. And it's a privilege for me to address this admirable audience on the threshold of the five-fold transformation punch parivartan process. It was great to live a day in this virtuous ambience of self-discipline and selfless service at Smriti Mandir and pay homage to the founder, Param Pujaniya, Dr. Hedge Warji. And I also had the occasion to visit his house and the place of his birth yesterday. It's a combination of simplicity and greatness. I recall that way back in January 2016 at the Akhil Bharati Shring Vadya Shibir held in Bangalore, 2,000 Swayam Sevaks from various parts of the country merged their minds to the finest level in time, tempo, and tone. This day, it's a unique experience to witness the harmony of valor and determination all around from the morning. And thank you for this amazing feeling. I would say a few words about the takeaways from India's space Odyssey. Human civilizations have striven to understand our place in the universe and look to the heavens for answers to the question, where do we come from? Where are we going? Are we alone in the universe? Jantar Mandir, an astronomical observation site built by Maharaja Jay Singh too in Jaipur during the 18th century and presently inscribed as one of the UNESCO's World Heritage Sites is an expression of the astronomical skills and cosmological concepts of a scholarly past of India. At the dawn of modern space age, in the early 1960s, India ventured into space activity, but with a difference. India opted to be society-centric in its pursuit under the legacy of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, Dr. Satish Thawan, and Dr. Brahma Pragash, great inspiring leaders. Pristine brains from across the length and breadth of the country flocked around at ISRO to do rocket science. And stalwarts for the first generation laid the bedrock of space technology and applications in India. Professor Yuar Rao, Dr. Abdul Kalam, and Professor Yeshpal led our first three major projects, Aryabhatta, SLV-3, and the site experiment. And that was a bold start to the saga. India made prominent and deep engagements for use of space technology for sustainable human well-being and made foray into the strategic imperatives of the country. Earth-oriented application satellites became the bedrock of national communication infrastructure and natural resources management. Space technology touched every Indian's life including the farmers and the fishermen, with significant socio-economic impact. And Atmanur Bharata, self-reliance, has been our obsession from the past, not just an objective. In recent times, Indian space probes have reached out to the lunar surface, Chandrayaan-3. 
into the Martian orbit and the Lagrangian point one of the Sun-Earth system, that is Aditya mission. Indian human space flight is in the offing. The captains of the current generation space in India are making every Indian proud. The mere presence of two former chairman ISRO in this forum today shows the importance that the country is providing to the space. And the current generation are mentoring the new gen leaders of space who will take India into the aspirational heights of Bharati Antariksha Station and finally putting an Indian on moon by 2040. And saga would continue. Now the message is, what are the takeaways from this space odyssey? There are a few first and foremost. We shared a vibrant vision and our pragmatic role in the national context. Next, we set tough goals and tough schedules for ourselves and try to meet them. The important part is to set goals rightly at the personal level and the institution's level. Next, ingenuity and prudence of resources became our uniqueness. We learned from failures and also from successes and developed resilience to leapfrog in adversities with preparedness for all imaginable scenarios. We imbibe the power of self-belief and team excellence. And transformational leadership continued with a sublime combination of the wisdom of elders and innovative power of the younger generation. And in the emerging world order, India would hold a prominent place in space applications, space exploration, space habitat, and exploitation of celestial resources. So this has been an odyssey of selfless service to the nation. Let me just ponder over the issues of technology security. Technology and applied sciences are engines of economic growth and the confluence of big science and deep technology. They are becoming increasingly relevant to solve the most formidable problems of the nation. And India has made commendable strides in space and several other areas of science and technology. However, in the evolving technology-centric world, we need a rapid transformation from technology dependence to technology adequacy. And technology leads across core socio-economic sectors and strategic sectors. A renewed emphasis on materials, engineering, and manufacturing technology are crucial to achieve these targets of technology security. Technology is advancing exponentially. And presently, we live in a technology-fueled transformative era. As per the survey of World Economic Forum, half-life of skills is below five years or even half for many of the areas. And the big picture is the narrative of a future from a technological perspective, and which seems to evolve around seven major areas. Artificial intelligence, boundless connectivity, blockchain technology, quantum computing, metaverse, synthetic biology, and aerospace systems. And the next decade will witness the sixth and possibly the seventh industrial revolution. And it is imperative that we reinvent ourselves in shorter time scales and 
stay relevant aside providing proactive regulations to ensure a secure world and technology must have a human face we should be sensitive to the humanitarian impacts of technological interventions and the cardinal question is how technology will make a difference to the life of the users and there is always a lingering question whether a society with various and varying geographies and demography like in india is ready to embrace technologies without distrust in other words is our society future ready and the major responsibility of this is with the educational institutions and already in the educational institutions technology has made a big difference in the way education is delivered and if you look at our higher education system they are in a state of transition in the positive direction delightfully an amazing national educational policy nep 2020 to transform india into a vibrant knowledge society and to mold global citizens with critical thinking conceptual understanding and human values and it aims to bring out the unique capabilities of each student to suit the needs of the 21st century and rightly with holistic flexible and multidisciplinary education at school and college levels internationalization of higher education that is another important aspect that has come up indian higher education institutions have started opening campuses abroad and today we have cities abroad transformative reforms in strengthening the periodic assessment and accreditation of the higher education institutions that's underway and the important thing is we are looking at not only the input but the and finally the impact they make into the society and i said we are in a state of transition and there is a huge emphasis today on research innovation and entrepreneurship and the recently enacted anusandhan national research foundation would foster a concomitant research ecosystem in the country let me now change to sharing my life lessons with the youth performing arts and imbibing spiritual heritage help me with value centric personal decisions in life and for mindful leadership in frontiers of space science and technology and music helps me to remain as an eternal student i was exposed to bhagavad gita in my younger days when i was in class 6 i was in acting the role of arjuna in gita upadesh where the mind is not there with you there is no use of all the power that we have that's what we learned but i started appreciating bhagavad gita from then and it has helped me in my life to keep my composer in tough times and to regenerate myself i'm still a student of that i try to understand interpret and see the applicability in life let me share a couple of points from bhagavad gita that's applicable to the youth the chapter 16 of bhagavad gita begins with an exclusive list of noble traits in a cultured person ayam satva samshuddhi jnana yoga vyavasthiti danam damascha yatnascha swadhyayas tava arjavam fearlessness abhayam 
സത്വ സംശുദ്ധി പ്യൂരിറ്റി ഓഫ് ഹാർട്ട് ജ്ഞാനയോഗ വ്യവസ്ഥിതി സ്റ്റെഡ് ഫാസ്റ്റ്നെസ് ഇൻ ദ യു നോളജ് ദാനം അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡബിൾ ദമം കൺട്രോൾ ഓഫ് ദ സെൻസസ് യജ്ഞ ദ സാക്രിഫൈസ് സ്വാധ്യായ സെൽഫ് സ്റ്റഡി ഓഫ് സ്ക്രിപ്റ്റേഴ്സ് തപ അസറ്റിസിസം ആൻഡ് ആർജവം അപ്രൈറ്റ്നെസ് ഫ്രം അഭയം ടു ആർജവം and swami chenmayananda in his commentary indicates that sincerely pursued and consciously lived these ethical values and moral beauties contribute to a better expression of the diviner possibilities in a person which generally is dormant bhagavad gita concludes with an observation of sanjaya which is important yatra yogeshwara krishna യത്ര പാർത്ഥോ ധനുർധര തത്ര ശ്രീ വിജയോ ഭൂതിർ ധ്രുവനീതി മതിർ മമ ദറ്റ് മീൻസ് വി നീഡ് ബോത്ത് ദി ധനുർധാരി ആൻഡ് ദ യോഗേശ്വര വൈൽ വി ഹാവ് ടെക്നോളജി വി ഓൾസോ നീഡ് ടു ഹാവ് ദ ഐഡിയൽസ് ഓൺ ഹൗ വി മേക്ക് യൂസ് ഓഫ് ഇറ്റ് എ നൈഫ് ഇൻ ദ ഹാൻഡ് ഓഫ് എ സർജൻ സേവ്സ് എ ലൈഫ് ബട്ട് ദറ്റ് നൈഫ് in the hand of a bad person will be a problem for the humanity and let me conclude now and inspire them to be a sensitive individual to the society of our nation and humanity at large and live up to and be a leader. Thank you for being in this great opportunity and to be amongst you on this great opportunity today. And once again, I will thank Param Pujaniya, Sarkhan Karat, Mohan Bhagavad for this opportunity. Thank you.